Curse the Lord. Which one is this? That's YouTube. That's Instagram. And this here is um, Facebook. This is okay. So you'll see a live stream start shortly on that end. Oops. Go to home or scroll down. It should start there. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to go to the right bottom corner and hit expand. This one, right? No. Yep. Okay, so you should see the comments populate over there. So, welcome everybody to another episode of Her Head, His Body. <laughs> Where we discuss <laughs> biblical marriage and give biblical marriage uh, marital counseling through a uh, word view and not a world view. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, tonight we have a wonderful topic, everybody, and I hope yes. you're excited about the revelation that you're about to get and the information that you're about to get that's going to not only be applicable to your marriage, but be applicable to your relationship between you and Jesus. I just want to mute that. Uh -huh. um, you got the whole. Oh. Nothing, Felicia. Um, go to the bottom right. Go to the bottom right of that arrow. Click that arrow up. Mm -hmm. Now find you and just bring it all the way to the left. Praise the Lord. So God bless everybody. I'm glad you all could tune in, whether you're watching by way of Facebook, watching by way of Instagram, or watching by way of YouTube. Um, for those who are on Facebook, we are monitoring your live comments, so we will be able to see um, every question you may have Excuse what we're going to try to do from now on is we're going to try to allot a certain small segment towards the end of um, Every session for anyone who is watching to ask questions. We want to also make this interactive So I know on Facebook we have that capability. I might be able to see you from all hey, Could you do one second? Sweetie? Yeah. Um, this is we just do this how we do it. We're transparent. We don't mind straighten that up just a little bit pull it up okay. Yeah, you got to hold yeah right there it's not staying. It's not? No. Oh, that's fine. Perfectly. Um, Just, well, straighten it up a little bit, if you can, however you want to do that. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. As long as they can see us. Praise the Lord. So, tonight we're dealing with intimacy in marriage. We're talking about what intimacy is, by definition, how does intimacy apply to our marriages, and more importantly, how intimacy applies to our relationship with Jesus Christ. So one disclaimer we always want to put out at the beginning of any of our episodes this is why we do this is that the information that we're going to give you an insight that we're going to give out is not only applicable to those who are in a marriage and they're not only applicable to those who are saved. It's applicable to the unsaved and the single as well, because what we want to do is show you how regardless whether you are in a marital relationship with another significant other a human being, mm. more importantly, if you're pursuing Christ, you are in a relationship and a covenant with him. And that is extremely important. Mm -hmm. So the information that we give you today that's going to help you in your actual marriage is also going to help you in your personal relationship between you and God. Yes, Lord. So I am Pastor Charles Russell, and this is Felicia, my beautiful wife. And you are now tuned into her head and his body. So what we want to do, as always, before we get into it, is go before the throne and give God glory. So my wife is going to lead us okay. in prayer. Praise the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God. Thank you, Jesus. Name, Jesus. Thank you for this moment, oh God. Thank you Father you God. didn't have to wake us up this morning, but oh you God. did. Hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you. I just thank, thank you. you. I just Thank you for bless this moment. Name, Hallelujah. I bless you, oh, oh God. God. I praise so your name. You, we Lord praise God. your name, Move Heavenly Father. Move in a mighty way tonight, Lord God. Move in a mighty bless way somebody's marriage, today. Lord God. Hallelujah, Bring about God. restoration, Thank Lord you, God. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Glory. I pray, amen. Amen, amen. I am so grateful. I'm, I'm happy about this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's so what good. we're going to do is first, before my wife gets into um, some scripture, 
about some things that the Lord has laid on her heart about intimacy and marriage from a biblical view and a word view and, of course, not a world view, is uh, we're going to define intimacy. Um, just Miriam's Webster's uh, Dictionary's version of what intimacy is. And by definition, it's closeness of observation. So closeness of observation, being able to, to observe someone by being in close proximity with them or knowledge of a subject, right? A close association with or detailed knowledge or deep understanding of something or someone. An act or expression serving as a token of familiarity, affection, or sexual intercourse. So intimacy from a worldview is usually slimmed down to sexual intercourse, right? Mm -hmm. But from a word view, what we're going to do is expand your understanding on what intimacy is. Because this topic has brought a lot of marriages down because a lack thereof or an absence, if you will, or the wrong idea of intimacy. Some of us get into marriages based off false pretense. False yes, pretense. Lord. So when you look at this definition, it says a closeness of observation. That means I have to be in close proximity, right? Not for just the uh, idea of sexual intercourse, but communication. <clears throat> and through that closeness of observation, I gain knowledge of a subject or a person, and I have a close association and detailed knowledge and deeper understanding of that something or someone. Now, it can also be an act. Now, remember, for everything that we feel, like our mood and our uh, our feelings, I can be angry, I can be sad, I can be happy, there is also a way to express what I feel. So intimacy is actually a noun, but there is a way that I can express my intimacy as well. And in that case, that goes into sexual intercourse. So what we want to deal with is intimacy is more than just sexual intercourse. It is, say it again. Say it again. Intimacy is more than just sexual intercourse. Say it for intercourse. the ones in the back. Intimacy, <laughs> three times is a charm, is more than just sexual intercourse. So yes, Lord. my wife is going to lead us off in oh, dealing with intimacy in oh, creation. Lord. Genesis 127 in your yes. Bibles. Yes, please turn to Genesis 127. You all bear with me. Y'all don't see me on him much. It's but right. Let the Lord God is use good you. and God is going to use me today. Let the Lord I use am you. stepping out. So God is good. All right. So Genesis 127 says, So God created man in his own image. And the image of God created he him. Basically, he created him. Man and female created he them. So uh, again, um, I wanted to come with the word from the word created. Created means shape, form. It's an action word. It's what God did. He shaped man. Amen. So then it ties into intimacy. Amen. Close. Observation. Fam close familiar. Familiarity. Okay. Uh, really knowing someone. Amen. God to ha had to have really known man and to able to create him. Come on with it. Um. And that's intimacy, you know, um, familiar familiarity uh, means close acquaintance and knowledge of something. Amen. God knew man. God knew exactly what we was going to do. God Amen. knew everything about man. And Thank that you, was intimacy. Glory. Pure intimacy. Glory. Just imagine how he formed uh, Adam. Think about the ears. Think about the eyes. Amen. Know every little in intricate piece about yes, man. Glory. And that was true intimacy. Thank you, Jesus. It gets no better than that. Amen. Knowing him. Glory. You know, knowing everything about Adam. Thank you, Jesus. He knew everything. And that's true intimacy. And how that can go with marriage. Get to know your spouse. Amen. True Hallelujah. intimacy. Thank you, Jesus. Knowing them. Glory. Knowing everything about them. And I just, uh, you know, God gave me that and that was revelation. And uh, I just think and praise God for that. Amen. Uh, for that small little nugget, how God created man. And that was true intimacy. Amen. And I'd like to piggyback off of that. And I think yes. it's beautiful revelation that the Lord laid that on your heart. Intimacy and creation. Um, God had to get intimate with man to create man. And the beautiful thing about it is Amen. there was never a time where God did not know man. Um, as we see with Jeremiah say, before your mother formed you in the womb, I knew you, right? So there was always this knowledge that God has had before mankind ever came into Praise existence. We were a thought in the mind of the Lord. 
And the beautiful thing about it is that God loved us so much that he created us because he wanted to be desired. God right. didn't need to be desired. God was all fine right. by and, himself. And I have a note here, mm-hmm. not to cut you off, no, but ahead. I say, I believe it ties into having a desire and that's for God. Amen. That intimacy relationship you have to have with God. You have to have a desire, Amen. a zeal. Amen. And you know? for the right things. And for the right um, things. Again, yeah. like from a world view and not a word view, right. we usually view intimacy as a release. Yeah. Um, getting engaged with someone in a physical or sexual manner and that's all and it's usually just for the pleasure but it's not to know the person we're going to deal with that later so desire has a lot to do with intimacy but some of our desires are ungodly some of our desires are motivated wholeheartedly and solely by a physical need to have a release or a sexual release if you will and that really troubles a lot of relationships right because it's very rare you get two partners that are both equally sexually active so if you have one that is not as sexually active as the other, what's going to happen is the one who's so used to expressing themselves merely in a sexual manner are going to feel like their partner does not love them because in their mind, they program themselves and have been conditioned by the world to believe that if you're not expressing yourself to me sexually, then you don't love me. So right. one thing about I wanted to deal with with the intimacy and creation mm-hmm. Everything else that God created, he spoke. Spoken. But when it came to Adam, he Listen, formed. Oh, God. He the fashioned. The of God. Thank hallelujah. You. You. What we have to understand is if you were to look at the Jesus. human body and the intricacies, as my wife said, in every Listen. organ within the Listen. human body, the he eyeball, how it time. works, oh, the eardrums, how Thank they work, God. every blood vessel and every Thank organ you in your God. body. Thank you, God. God Hallelujah, said, I love Jesus. you so much that I'm going to handcraft you. Oh, God. Get up and close and personal with you. Jesus. And then, after I've created the shell which you will habitate, I will breathe myself into you. Oh, oh God. God. Thank you, It Jesus. has always been God's desire to dwell in man oh, and not God. around man. Jesus. So when he breathed the Ruach Kadesh, Thank the Holy Ghost, God. Into the dead nostrils of Adam, he filled not he filled Adam with knowledge. Thank you, God. That spirit that went into the nostrils of Adam awakened Adam to become a living soul, right? Yes, God. A conscious being, conscious of three things simultaneously. Now, through the body, he's conscious of the world around him, right? That's knowledge of the world. Through his soul, he oh, is self-conscious, God. knowledge of self. Through the spirit, yeah. God breathed into him, he's God conscious. You, God. What the Lord says is, I know you, but now I'm putting me in you so you can get no, to no know me. me. Oh God, he breathed knowledge, which is through the spirit, into the dead nostrils of Adam. Oh God. Now there's some place I want to take you still building with how there was intimacy in creation, right? And how right. God breathed knowledge into the nostrils of Adam. Follow me. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse Thank 9 you, through 11. It's going to give us insight or how the Lord put knowledge into the nostrils of Adam, oh God, that he may have the ability to know not only himself, not only the world around him, but most importantly, the God who created him. Remember, so that is mm-hmm. intimacy. Intimacy. It's all going back to intimacy. Yes. To know, to be acquainted to with one through close observation of close. familiarity, close. right? Mm-hmm. So we got 1 Corinthians 2, right? Verse 9 through 11. The writer is Paul. Watch what he says. But as it is written, this is an Old Testament reference, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Meaning man is bereft of the knowledge of the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But that identification of men that don't have that knowledge is talking about men who don't got the Holy Ghost. So right. verse 10 shows us that That knowledge is only absent to those who lack the spirit of God. Remember I said that God breathed knowledge into the nostrils of Adam? This is how we prove it scripturally. Verse 10 says, but God Mm -hmm. hath revealed them unto who? Us, the saints, by what? His spirit. So basically the things which God hath prepared for them that love him that has not entered into the heart of the man or no eye hath seen nor ear have heard, God revealed them to us by his spirit. The spirit was the agent to reveal the knowledge of, of the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Why though, Paul? For the Spirit searcheth all things. The Spirit searcheth, follow me now. Intimacy is close observation, right? Yes. Familiarity to get to know one on a deeper level. 
The Holy Ghost searcheth all things. It goes into the deeper parts of man, Jesus. not the surface level, right? Not just what I see on the outside. I'm going into the deeper compartments of man. So the spirit searcheth all things that pertains to knowledge, to intimacy. Yea, the deep things of God, mm -hmm. right? For what man knoweth, that's that word, knoweth intimacy, the things of a man, save or accept the spirit of man which is in him. Meaning, how, what man knoweth the things that pertain to mankind except the spirit of man or the breath which is in him? So the man knows the things of man through the breath of life that God breathed into his nostrils. Mm. Even so, meaning just as a man can know the things of a man through the breath in him, so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So how can we know God without the Holy Ghost? It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So when God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, he breathed knowledge into Adam's nostrils. Knowledge that man may know not only who created him, meaning knowing who God is, but knowing what God desires. It, it brings up that scripture i don't i can't quote it all the way but um tell me about um if you don't have the spirit you're none of his romans 8 and 9 any and man that does not have the spirit, spirit of christ of is, none, is none, of none of his so then it goes it takes me to uh um why is my brain going so blank um Depart, depart from me working for of iniquity yeah depart from me before so I, I never, never knew, knew you, you. Amen. and it's just like wow it's all like, about knowing Yes. So when we think about how this applies into a marriage, a physical marriage, right? It's the desire to know. Like she the said desire. earlier in the creation, intimacy and creation, God had a desire to know us. And he also had a desire for us to know him know. as well. Yes. That's all what intimacy is about. That's the basis of a relationship. Both partners in that relationship know one another and it makes the fruitful. It makes a fruitful relationship. So we just dealt with how God breathed knowledge right into the nostrils of Adam through the Holy Ghost with one sole purpose so that right. they can be intimate. Right. They can know one another through close observation. You know what that's called? That's called mouth to nose resuscitation. Yes, Lord. That's close, right? <laughs> you know when we do CPR, you got to get close, right? Jesus. That's what the Lord did with it with uh, Adam's Adam. nostrils. Mouth to nose resuscitation. So, there's a word, right? When we deal with knowing because we tie knowing in with intimacy because I don't I can't be intimate with you unless I know you. Mm -hmm. And I get intimate with you to know you. And mm -hmm. it's not only sexual. Remember, it's not just sexual intercourse. There's a word in the Greek called gnosko. Um, the word is spelled G-I-N-O-S-K-O. Gnosko. And what it means is, by definition, to know. Especially through personal experience. Mm -hmm. In other words, first-hand acquaintance. To experientially know, right? So, in other words, if I have to slim that definition down, to know someone through first-hand experience. Yes, close acquaintance. Like I always tell people this, right? You can read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelations and know about God, but not know God. Know God. Knowing yeah. about someone and knowing them are two different things. That's I can answer. read about biographies of people that no longer exist and probably get to know about them, but not get to know them. Right. In those books, they can have the most deepest, intimate, intimate secrets and insight on who they are and their past experiences. But even after reading all of that, I would know them. What do we need after we've read the Bible? What should the Bible lead us to so we may know God? An encounter, oh yeah. God, through the Holy Spirit. Thanks. The Bible teaches us, one, who the Holy Ghost is, which is God, and how to receive him. Yeah. So the Bible, which is about God, should lead you to know God through that firsthand experience through being filled with the Holy Spirit. So gnosko simply means to experientially know. Now, to know could be in two different manners in this particular sense. Let Philippians 3 and 10 is the first one I want to deal with. Let's go to Philippians 3 and 10. Philippians 3 and 10, Paul speaking, he says that I may know him. Know who? Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. What Paul is saying is, I want to know Jesus. Now, obviously, he's not saying, I want to know Jesus in a sexual manner, right? Yeah. So does that not signify that we can know somebody without having sex with them? Yeah. That there is another form of intimacy another that is far form. greater than sexual intercourse? So in this case, the word know is gnosko, which I just referenced in the Greek, right? So in this context, to know him means to know him through firsthand experience, right? Through the Holy Spirit, but also yeah. through suffering. I get to know God through sharing in his suffering. So that is another form of intimacy that doesn't tie into our worldview, but is supported in the word's view. Now, another form of that same word, gnosko, which 
Paul just used in a sense of experiential knowledge that had nothing to do with sex. Now let's look at it from a sexual standpoint. Matthew 1 and 25. This is talking about Joseph and Mary, right? The whole miraculous event of Jesus being born is that it was through immaculate conception, meaning that there was no sexual intercourse involved. Wow, that's a whole nother level. I'll deal with that later. But here it is, Matthew 1, 25. And knew, her, and knew I her not. This is Joseph talking about Mary. And knew I her, knew knew her. I her not, okay. meaning I didn't know her. Till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So there was a lot of controversy when Mary was pregnant, and Joseph almost put her away for divorce right, because he yep. felt that she had been in an adulterous act. Right. How are you impregnated, and it's not through me? So what he's saying is, I didn't know her until she brought forth her firstborn son. Now, he means in this case, I haven't gone into her through sexual intercourse. Right. Here it is, y'all. I don't want to touch on this for a moment. Sexual intercourse is the consummation of a relationship. It is not the creation of a relationship. Right. To consummate right. means we come to become one, right? Through sexual intercourse. That is the ceiling of what we led up to through intimacy, through talking and communication. Communication and consummation. Communication leads to consummation. Through communication, I get to know you. You get to know me. Through us getting to know one another in a spiritual, emotional, and intellectual manner will now be completed in a sexual manner. But here's how the world do it. They jump right into sexual intercourse, right? Consummation in a sexual manner. Now let's get to know one another yeah. intellectually. But you just, you have just made a covenant with that person who you don't even know. Not through I do in marriage, but when you have sex, that's a covenant. You become in a covenant or a contractual agreement with someone that you don't even know. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't get into business with anybody in a business manner that I didn't know. Right. So I would definitely get to know this person through what? Close observation right. and intimacy that is not sexually related before we get into a contractual agreement. So that's to know through experience. Do you have anything you want to add to that or you want to touch on anything? No, not one. I think it's your next slide. OK. So one thing God revealed to me still dealing with knowing in a sense of marriage knowing your partner right even before you all get married that's important yes it is knowing one another before you even engage in marriage right because again that's a contractual agreement but how can i please a stranger that's the topic i want to deal with y'all how can i please a stranger it's impossible Simple. because everything i do going into my attempt to please that stranger it's going to be based off of how I please somebody else. Oh, God, we're going to deal with it now. Let's go to Luke 10, verse 38 through 42. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. It says now, now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus's feet and did what? Her his word. Oh, yes. God. Come on now. But Martha was cumbered, which means she was distracted. Oh, God. About with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her tell her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful. That means you're worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now, listen to what I want to talk about regarding to how can I please a stranger? Right. In this case, right, Mary and Martha have Jesus as their dinner guest, right? So what happens is, is Mary is sitting at Jesus's feet and listening to the word of God the whole time, right? She is not distracted with trying to prepare the dinner, or distracted with even trying to serve him in a manner that her sister Martha is. Martha is getting angry because she's looking at Mary sit at the feet of Jesus Christ while she's up running around right, trying, trying to get everything. dinner prepared and serve him, right? And she even tells Jesus, listen, are you going to just sit there and let her uh -huh. sit at your feet and let me serve alone? And notice the scripture says she was distracted about with much serving. Distracted about with much serving. So her desire to serve Christ was distracting her from getting to know Christ. Oh God, watch this. It says, tell her to come and help me, basically. Jesus answered to Martha and says, listen, you're worried and you're troubled about many things, but one thing is needful right now. 
and Mary have chosen that which is needful mm-hmm. right now. What that means is she's getting to know me. Yes. How do we get to know God outside of, of course, being filled with the Holy Ghost? His word. Yes. It's his will and his testament. So when God gives us his word, he's telling us who I am, my ability, my desire towards mankind and my expectations of you in this relationship. Right. It's just like a job description. We go and get a job. There's a job description telling us of the expectation of the employer to the employee. Right. How can I be the best employee at that job if I don't even know the job description, right? So where did Martha make her mistake? She's trying to please somebody she don't, don't even, know. even know. How can my wife cook a meal for me? She don't even know what I like. She might make something that I absolutely hate. How can I go out and get something for my wife for Mother's Day or for her birthday and I don't even know what she likes? I'm going to bring back something nine times out of ten that she don't like. So what Mary was doing, Mary said, I got to get to know him first. And if I sit right here at his feet and I listen to his word, he's educating on me on what he likes and dislikes. So now I can serve him more thoroughly. What good is it being active and ineffective, y'all? How many of us in our relationship are extremely active but extremely ineffective? We're doing a lot. We're in motion constantly trying to please our other our significant other, but we don't even know them to please them. Right. So how does this tie into your marriage? One thing about it is we have to get to know one another before we can serve one another. Right. Now, I'm going to take it somewhere that's deep, and it's controversial, but it needs to be talked about in a sexual sense. Most men, and I don't want to stereotype, we go into the situation not even thinking about how our wives feel about that particular right. occurrence. So it's like I have a need and I want to release, but I don't want the responsibility of one getting you even prepared for this engagement. I just expect you to get ready and I'm going to you know, do what I need to do and then we're going to leave from there. And that's the most inconsiderate and unempathetic thing you could possibly do. One thing I have to realize and every man has to realize is don't bring knowledge from your old relationship yeah, in your current absolutely. relationship. What worked for your girlfriend ain't going to work for your wife. What may have turned on, please, or whatever terminology you want to use, That old person is not going to necessarily be attributed to your wife. So if I want to please my wife in any way, not just sexually, y'all, I got to get to know her. She has to get to know me. That's what Mary was doing. Mary mastered the art of knowing that I need to know my master before I can serve my master. While Martha, on the other hand, was more concerned with serving him, but not even knowing how to serve him. And that ties into what I wanted to say. Martha was having what had a superficial relationship with God and not an intimate relationship with God. Superficial is, you know, surface level, only external. Her surface level was thinking she knew what, you know, by cleaning up and not even getting to know him what Mary was doing. And that was being at his feet. That's it. And uh, just, yeah, you have to get to know him. To know how to please them. Yeah, that's superficial is that surface level surface, relationship. Surface level. You think about um, when you meet somebody, a lot of times the world is, um, how can I say it's so sexually charged, y'all. And we are being brought up in a hypersexual um, right. generation and a hypersexual society where everything is about the external. So external. What Ooh. we do is um, when we meet somebody, a lot of times if we're not, of course, if we're not filled with the Holy Ghost, our flesh and our impulse and our outward desires take over. So what we do is we analyze a person from an outward form. And a lot of men, when they use the terminology, well, let's link up, go to the movie so we can get to know one another better. Yeah. It's very rarely them talking about communication and intellectual um, intercourse. Do y'all know that's a thing? Intellectual intercourse? Oh, God. That is the exchanging of thoughts and ideas yeah. so I can get to know who you are on the inside. And then now I can be more, how can I say, desirous of your person and not just the pleasure that I can get from you. Right. But Mary had that down, but Martha didn't. <laughs> Superficial relationships are based on, wow, he's red or he's tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah. Or she is this body shape that my flesh desires. But, but at the end of the day, I don't even know her in an intellectual manner. So we do the same thing with God. And um, a reference that I had with that, when it comes to know the person, not just the pleasure, right? Getting acquainted with the person and not what they can do for you, right? So coming into any type of relationship or any type of conversation or intimacy with the sole purpose of, I just want to get to know you better rather than I want to get something from you. Right. David made this grave mistake in 2 Samuel 11. I'm not going to read the verse. I'm a paraphrase, but I want you guys to read it on your own time. 
When David looked over and he saw Bathsheba, he didn't know Bathsheba from a can of paint. But what he did know was that her physical appearance was appeasing to his eye. Now, he also knew that she had a husband, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here what happens is he allows his impulse and his fleshly desire of pleasure to cause him to do something that is totally out of the will of God by sending her husband into a war that he knew he would die in. But see, it didn't go from him lusting after her and actually engaging in adultery to having her husband killed overnight. What happened was, is when David committed adultery with her, she became impregnated by David's seed. Now, what you did was you put something in her, but you didn't want to deal with what was going to come out of her. Oh, Jesus. my God. You wanted to release David, but you didn't oh, want God. the responsibility tied into it. Why do you think so many marriages fail? Why do you think we're so Jesus. hypersexual? Because what we want is the pleasure without the, the pleasure. purpose. Oh, God. Because sex in creation what was it for? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So what it came was, was there was procreation primarily and pleasure secondarily. He made the act of procreation pleasurable. God did that for us, right? To make procreation more plausible. But what happened was when Satan gets into the picture, he flips things around. And now he's saying because lust is into the picture, pleasure, let's not deal while it was going to still watch me. So I'm going to charge my phone here just bear with me one second if you don't mind baby if you want to elaborate on that you can touch on it oh, I think that's it. and and that's just like uh basically have uh using god um as a spare tire go ahead with it now. using them when you need them that's it and what do you do after you're done with a spare tire put them back in the trunk that's it we do that with god constantly yes. we do it with our significant others a lot yeah. so what we don't want to get into, right, is a reward system type right. of relationship. Right. I want you to think about this married couples or even uh, even single folks. A reward system relationship from a husband point of view, because that's all I can speak from, and I'll let my wife touch on it, is, baby, today while you were at work, I cleaned the whole house up. Um, that's, that, that furniture you wanted to move, I dealt with it, right? And I got dinner cooked, and I got everything ready. Now, if I'm sincere, I did all of that just to please you yeah. with no strings attached. Mm -hmm. So I did it with no recompense necessary. It wasn't a contingency move. I didn't need to have a condition behind it, right? Or an ulterior motive. I did that to make you happy, point blank period. But if we're not careful, what we'll do is we'll say, well, I did all of that. Now I better get some sex. Let's mm -hmm. be honest. I did all of that. Now we can be intimate, right? And if your wife doesn't do that, then you're hot, you're angry, and, and you're mad, right? I did all of that for nothing, right? But you should have never done it if you just did it with an ulterior motive to receive something sexual, right? So what we do is, if we're not careful, and I'm going to say it blatant as possible, we turn our wives into harlots. We treat our wives like prostitutes because what is the def what is the definition of prostitution? Well, there's a woman who's willing to sell her body for a particular price. There's a man who's willing to sell his integrity for a particular price. He wants something, she wants something. He wants a release, she needs finances. So they come to a mutual agreement and they do something that God has ordained to be only for marriage and only for procreation and they go against the will of God. They compromise on their morals because she needs money and he needs a release. Mm. But how do we look when we come to our wives and we say, well, I've done X, Y, and Z in the household in return for your sex. You have now prostituted your wife. Jesus. You've turned her into a harlot. Now, remember, we said everything we talk about in the physical sense for our physical marriage applies to God, right? Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 through 9. Matthew 15, 8 through 9 is Jesus speaking to the hypocritical Pharisees and the Jews, right? He says, this people draweth nigh unto mm -hmm. me with their mouth and honoreth me yes, Lord. with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Far. Watch this. But in vain do they worship me, Jesus. teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men. Now, what that means in a spiritual sense, but how it also applies to us is this. In Jesus's context, he's saying a quote from Isaiah. He's saying, you all, you draw near to me with your mouth. You give me lip service. I love you. Mm -hmm. I'll serve you. I'll worship you. Sundays. Right? Exactly. Sundays. That's mouth worship, right? And you honor me with your lips. You tell people that I'm your God. You serve me no matter what. But with your heart, which is the most precious part of you, which is what I want. The most intimate place in a man or a woman is our heart. That's so far from me. 
So right here with your mouth, but you're light years away from me with your heart. What makes you think I want your mouth? I want your heart. Yeah. Because from out of the abundance of the heart, heart the, the mouth, mouth speaketh. Yeah. So if I'm in your heart, I naturally got your mouth. See, I want to be intimate with you, not on a superficial level. I don't just want a piece of your body, which is your lips. I want your soul. That's the heart of you, right? So a lot of times what we do with God, like this passage, we come into his presence, we clap, we sing, we praise, and we think we can rub Jesus like a genie mm -hmm. to get something out of him, right? Him. We did not come into worship with the sole purpose of lifting God up and magnifying his name and serving him. No, we came with the sole purpose that uh -huh. if I say this and I go through the motions, right? I'm not even engaged in the activity of worship. Uh -huh. I just feel like if I do this X, Y, and Z in a robotic manner, in a formulaic manner, you'll give me something. Uh -huh. So I will pay my tithes religiously. I will be at every Sunday service, right? I will do what I think pleases you according to your word, but my heart is not engaged uh -huh. in the activity. Uh -huh. Why do you think, and I'm going to be honest with you, Baby, from a woman's standpoint, why do you think that there are so many relationships where sex is a problem? It's because the lack of intimacy intellectually. It's because now we're doing it on a schedule. Yeah. This is just because, well, one party usually is like, well, I don't really want to do it, but all right, to please you, I'm going to do it, right? And you're not engaged in it. Let's be honest. We're all adults. That is not a pleasurable experience. When one party is only doing it to go through the motions and the other party can't even enjoy it now because it's like, I know your heart's not involved in it. You're giving me your body right now to get me out of your face, but your heart's not engaged into it. So how would that look with God, though? Right. You come to me and you're going through the service, you know, the order of services, but your heart is in the parking lot. Your heart mm -hmm. is at home about to watch your favorite TV show. Your heart is where we're going to eat later. It's not in the here and the now. Like, how does that look from a woman's perspective when you know your husband is only there and his heart ain't involved? It's more so, I want to get a release, and after that, I turn over and I go to sleep. It's happened in every relationship. Yeah. How does that feel as a Just woman like emotionally? Just like you said uh, earlier, it's, you feel used. Um, yep. You feel used. Like, like you say, you feel like a prostitute. Like, just like, oh, wow. You just d dumped, mm -hmm. released. And then you turn around and you go to sleep? No. That's just, it, it doesn't feel good at all. It feels, you know, demoralizing, like, little. It doesn't feel good. And that's where, you know, understanding. And it kind of ties into what I want to talk about Where? next is cultivating. Go ahead. Bring it up. Let's go. You have to cultivate your marriage. Cultivating, plowing is tilling, digging. Cultivating Jesus. means breaking up soil in preparation for sowing Come and planting oh, a God. seed. Wow. Sowing and planting a seed. You have to cultivate your marriage in order to sustain it. You must plant great wow. seeds into your marriage. Jesus. How do you do that? <laughs> you know? Wow. Some ways Glory be to, God. to cultivate it by listening to your spouse. Yeah. Listening to Thank each you other. Jesus. Doing Bible Speak studies Lord. together. Speak God. Reading the Bible together. Making sacrifices. And that's how it kind of ties into the sexual part, Thank you know. God. This is the way. If you, you know, you wouldn't feel used if you do cultivate your marriage. Yeah. You know, if you know what the words say, you wouldn't feel like that. Honestly, you know, let's be honest. Let's be true. real. Um, and, you know, doing activities together. Amen. Cultivate your marriage. It's not, like you said, it's not all about sexual. Amen. It's not all about sex. It's not all about sex. No, definitely. Let's go walk on the beach. Amen. Let's go have a picnic. Getting to know each other. Cultivating that marriage. Stirring it up. Yes. Plowing it. Yes. So you can plant great seeds. Come on with it now. Oh, God. Planting positive Thank things. You. Cultivating. Glory. So your spouse Thank you, God. can uproot, grow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you Lord. Wow. Glory so your to spouse God. can grow. Thank you, Jesus. And bloom and blossom into a great flower. Come on with it. Both parties will be satisfied. Thank you, Jesus. Both parties will be illuminating with light. Thank, God. Thank you, Lord. Listen. And the source Jesus. comes from light. Listen. Thank that's you, God. You know, I definitely can. I, I feel the power of God right yes. now. Yes. Because, in essence, what you're saying and what the scriptures are saying, but we're about to reference here in a right. second, cultivation is preparation. Mm -hmm. 
Preparation. You can tie those two yeah. words in together synonymously, right? Mm-hmm. How many of us want to sow the seed without Hope. any preparation? Listen. Matthew 13, we seen they don't, that. They don't have time for that. Exactly. It's impulsivity. We see that in Matthew 13, the parable of the sower, the success of that seed growing was based on what soil it was in, right? Right. So we know that it fell on the the wayside. That means it fell on packed soil. Couldn't even get into the soil. Right. Bird snatched it That's up. That's leading somewhere else. Got it. Fell in stony Listen. ground. Listen. Couldn't get deep enough in the soil. The sun came out. It withered away. How many of our marriages look Jesus. like the seed that fell in rocky soil, right? The rocks crowd out growth. Mm-hmm. Most important part of that plant is the roots. It anchors then, itself, right? That makes me think, what was their agenda behind getting married? That's yeah. all it goes back to. What was your agenda? Did you was your agenda? The soil. <laughs> Listen, did, was your agenda Jesus. just for sex? I'm getting married oh, to you God. just for my pleasure. That's it. Thank so God. then, when your uh, your spouse, your <laughs> other spouse, want to sow positive seeds, you you it's, it's falling soil. on st- stony ground. Rocky soil. You can't even plant the seed. Will not Jesus. be able to plant this baby. And this all goes back into intimacy, which is yeah. close observation to get to know something. Right. right? I would be a fool not to inspect my soil before right. I planted my seed, That's right? True. Oh God. How many of us have planted our seed in cursed soil? Mm. And we did not understand that the rocks that was in that soil, that rocks could have been you not knowing her, that rocks mm-hmm. could have been she's been hurt in the past, she's been raped in the past. All right. Uh you may not know that. Now you wonder why there's a, a problem with intimacy. You didn't even bother to get to know your significant other. That something could have happened in our childhood, something could have happened earlier, where it turned her off completely from sex. That's the part of cultivation. Cultivate preparation. Observation, preparation, and cultivation go hand in hand. I'm preparing this soil, and guess what happens? When I'm preparing it, I'm learning about it. About it. Because I'm in close observation. Oh, there's some rocks in here. I know what this I know what this soil needs. Come on now. I know how to cultivate it. Mm -hmm. Remember, how can I serve somebody? How can I serve somebody I don't know, baby? How can I cultivate soil uh-huh. I'm not acquainted with? As I'm tilling the soil and I'm putting in the rigorous work, right, to prepare it to receive what I'm about to plant in it, yeah. I'm getting to know it. Getting There's getting thorns there. That's yes. going to prevent growth. Rocks Weed. there. That's going to prevent Tear. growth. I got to get all of that up out of there out, out. Yes. before I invest in this time. Now, that leads right into the passage in Isaiah 5, right? Yes. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 six. through 6 is what we're going to deal with now. We're going to look at observation. We're going to look at cultivation and preparation, right? Oh, wow. This is powerful. So you have observation, cultivation, cultivation and preparation, preparation go hand in hand. Mm. But what about insemination? Oh, God. Insemination is the impregnation. Oh, yes. God. When the seed is fine. But what do we We jump right into insemination. Jesus. And what we didn't do is observation and cultivation. Listen. And then, oh, or God. Preparation. Or preparation. Listen. It's in time together. Prepared. Wasn't prepared. <laughs> so Isaiah 5. Verse 1 through 6 Thank you, Jesus. is the most high God. Yahweh is basically laying out a analogy talking about the house of Israel. But he's addressing them as a vineyard, right? So watch what he says. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching or considering his vineyard. Yes. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. The hill was fruitful and he fenced it. Oh, he sectioned it off. Mm-hmm. When you fit something, that's not only for protection, but it shows ownership. This is my soil. Oh, God. That's why when we put these yes. rings on these fingers, not just this gold ring, but I mean the act of Garden. going through a Listen. covenant. With my, this is mine. She's mine and I'm hers. I got papers on her. She got papers on me. Okay? So, at the end of the day, he fenced it in. After he mm-hmm. found a plot of land that was Listen. fruitful. Woo. The land was fruitful. He, he fenced Jesus. it. I, this is mine, and I'm going to protect, protect it, right? Protect, yes. And watch what he did. The Here head. comes the cultivation. Jesus. And gathered out the stones thereof. Oh, Listen. God. He didn't up-keeping. just plant no seed. He's upkeeping it, Charles. First thing he did was he laid his eyes on a plot of land. Yes. He said, okay, that's going to be my land. I'm going to fence it first. Mm-hmm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to cultivate it. Because I want to plant something in uh-huh. this land. I didn't just get this land to mm. drive by and say it's beautiful. I want to plant something here. So I'm going to gather out that which is going to prohibit growth. These stones got to go, right? Mm-hmm. That's time. I'm getting to know the soil now, right? Because I'm cultivating it, right? So observation, cultivation. And planted it. You see the mm-hmm. order? He fenced it. Right. Gathered it, then planted. That's the insemination. 
with the choicest vine. Y'all know that's the best of the best. He planted this soil with the, blessed, the best of the best. He didn't plant it with the secondary type of grapes. He put the best in there, right? Say that one more time. Choices vine means the best vine. So mm -hmm. the best seed, if you will. Before that. Before oh, it says planted. that he gathered the stones out right. first. Because I'm not going to plant seed right. amongst stones. Mm -hmm. Get the stones out the soil, right? That's the cultivation. It's prepping the soil for the seed to be sown. That's insemination. It, it kind of put me into where say save yourself, you know, for marriage. Mm -hmm. It's just like you get to know the person. You do, then you get married. Yep. Then there's an order. You sow that seed. You know how we say order of operations? Yeah. Well, there's an order of consummation. And you get to know yes. through observation. Yes. Then you lead into the insemination of planting seed. And I'm not using seed only in a sexual manner. No. Anything I invest in, you yes, will see. Right. Anything you Positive invest in, you will see. And I want to see fruit bore yes. from that investment, right? But watch what the Lord says. He says, I planted it with the best of the best. Now I'm going to do something to show you that I'm attentive to your needs. I built a tower in the midst of it. Yes. The tower is so I can see the oh, enemy coming it. from a uh, long way. I look at it. It's look oversight. Yes. That's why they call him a bishop of our souls. That tower is for oversight That's over what I've invested in, That's right? The head. Exactly. The oversight. And also made a wine press therein. Oh, hold up. God, you're really invested. Because you know a vine yard produces grapes, yes. right? But there's something in that grape that's mm -hmm. a lot more valuable than the Jesus. grape itself. It's the wine. But you got to be pressed to get the best. Oh, God. You hear me? You got to be pressed to get the best. So what it is, is he said, I put a wine press in too because I want to squeeze something out of you that's more valuable than you yourself. Watch this. And he looked, he desired right. that it should bring forth grapes. But hold up, it brought forth wild wow. grapes. Bushum in the Hebrew means stinking or worthless fruit. Yeah. I did all of this investing. And I and you can't say it wasn't because I didn't cultivate. Mm. You can't say take what I had granted on you and take advantage of it. So when we look at this, I only brought this up basically to show, and I'm not even gonna go down and say right, no yeah. point. Just to show the cultivation. Right. There's a scripture that says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? And that thou visitest him. Who are we that you're that attentive to our needs? That you will put all of that work into us. But he shows us how to properly get the fruit we're looking for by cultivating the soil first. That's why I referenced that scripture. He got to know us through cultivating us. Mm -hmm. And then he inseminated us with his spirit. That's the beautiful thing about that it. That kind of go hand in hand with a, a, a marriage where one party is doing everything and the other party isn't. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, God held them accountable because he's like, listen, your lack of fruitfulness was not because I was had a lack of attentiveness. I was attentive to every, every need. Everything you needed to be fruitful and grow, I gave you, but you didn't. So think about marriage for you saints, right? We have the Bible and we have the Holy Ghost. Is that not everything we need to be fruitful? Right. So if we don't succeed, whose fault is it? It's ours. It's not God's. So the last thing I want to deal with, and I'll let my wife finish off if she'd like, okay, is good. knowing your wife. Now, the Bible says in 1 Peter 3, verse 7 through 1, mm -hmm. it says that, well, actually, 1 Peter 3 and 7, should I say. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, that's your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together, together. of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. What this is saying is husbands. Dwell with your wife according to knowledge. Remember that word, ganasco, means through experiential first-hand knowledge to get acquainted with her. So if I dwell with her or live with her acquainted to knowledge or according to knowledge, then I know my wife, so therefore I can dwell with her. How can I dwell with her successfully if I don't know her? So if I know, as the next part says, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Sweetie, where, what part of the body was the wife taken from? The rib. the rib and that's a part of the body right mm -hmm. not a part of the head right so ephesians tells us that the man is the head and the woman's the body mm -hmm. where's the brain where's the brain located in at head. in the head where's the heart located at the body. in the body right and the rib is close to the heart women are feelers let's just be honest i don't want to sound chauvinistic but women are emotionally driven mm -hmm. a lot of men are logically driven that is not a universal statement because there's some men that aren't logical right yeah. but primarily the head makes the decisions that is god's natural order for the man to be logical and doctrinally sound but my wife being emotional and me being logical don't contradict one another what they do is they complement one another there's a times when my logic is going to work <laughs> in a counseling session or in a witnessing to another person's soul and there's some time where the emotional 
um, aspect is going to work. And I have to be able to work with my wife. But how can I do that if I don't know her? Right. So how can I know that something that I might say to you that I don't think is offensive right. or hurt your feelings hurts your feelings unless I know you? Mm-hmm. If I know you, I know that I may not feel like what I'm about to say to her is going to be offensive, but I know my wife, she's emotional, right? In that sense, she's the weaker vessel, not in the sense of uh, priority or importance in God's eyes. Because what does it say? That we are heirs together of the grace, That's all about to say, right? Yeah. And that we should know one another that our prayers be not hindered. A lot of our marital marital prayers, a lot of people, you know why it's being hindered? Because y'all are not dwelling with one another according to knowledge, intimacy, Right. So what we hope as we uh, come to a conclusion, because we want to leave some time for some questions, yes. is that you understand that the worldview of intimacy is sexual intercourse. The worldview is close observation yes. to get to know one Both in a deeper point. more. It's more of an intellectual knowing, right? Yes. So that's what we want to really drive home is that a lot of marriages are suffering mm-hmm. because the worldview has told us that mm-hmm. intercourse is the only form of intimacy. Get to know your wife. Spend some time with her, right? Um, go somewhere where y'all just talk and both parties listen more than you talk. Oh God, listen attentively. That's how we get to know one another. And we also get, unfortunately, to know one another through tribulation. Yeah. Tribulation allows you to know parts of your significant other that you never would have seen how you endure because you have to come together through tribulation. That's our story. That's our story. Exactly. So we want to touch on this without taking too much time. And we pray, pray that, you know, the message and the information that was given out is going to be beneficial for you in your marriage, but also in your relationship with God. So if there's anybody. I also want to say um, also another way, you know, it's the number one thing that is very popular now. And that's those phones. Put the phones down. Get to know your spouse. Uh, leave them at home. Leave your phones at home. If, you know, Lord forbid, you know, I don't know if it'll be good it might be an emergency but or something but leave the phones in the car or something go on a date go do something simple you don't even have to spend money yeah get off of social media you know you look at other you know other people's lives and other people's marriages and thank you so much greener on the other side and sometimes it's worse than yours yeah you know really get to know each other yeah really intimacy Cause you know how many times we've we've done this before, yeah. And I've seen it in other families, and I think when I seen it in like a family infrastructure, it kind of made me look at our relationship and reevaluate and realize my error. Going out to eat these days, yeah. right? You see a family of maybe five, right? Sitting at the table. And everybody everybody got a phone. on the phone. You might Jesus. as well be in segregated uh, capsules or cubicles. Yeah. Because all that phone does is put up a wall. And what what you're saying is that I enjoy the company of people that are not even in my presence. More than yeah. the people who are right here. We've done that. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm on my phone, she on her phone. Like, what? Put the phones what down. Happened? Where I'll come to? Talk to one another. Get to know one another. My, me and my wife, we've been married for quite some time. And there's still some things that we don't know about one another. Which is why as time progresses, we're moving more into that intellectual intercourse. Let's take time away from just making it sexual and physical. Mm-hmm. Let's really talk. Tell me about your childhood. Yeah. I want to know your favorite color. I want to yes. know your likes and your dislikes. That way, how in many, my marital role, I can be more successful. Yeah. How many marriages can say they know what um their their spouse went through when they was a kid? Yeah. We just blot out that that childhood, but the childhood has a very it plays a very big role on your adulthood. Yeah. We start, very big role. We start right from the moment we met, mm-hmm. them, and that's it. That's it. And remember, what we said on the last one, whoever you marry. Right. At that time, whoever they that's, are, that's, that's who you who married. It, that's oh, who it is. God. That means you married their trauma. You hear me? You've married their depression. You've married their inhibitions. You married their fears, right? You married their debt even. So at the end of the day, whoever you marry, that's mm-hmm. who you're marrying at that point of time. Whoever they are as a person, that's who you married. You're not marrying uh, who you want them to be. You're marrying who they are now. So that's why it's important you get yeah. to know them it's before normal. you marry them. So if there's any questions before we wrap it up, we got a few minutes. Then anybody that's on Facebook or even Instagram that's watching, you have any questions about maybe something that we talked about tonight or you have a topic that you might like us to touch on yes. next Tuesday, if God permits, we would love to do that. And um, if not, of course, you can always DM me or my wife through Facebook, through Instagram, or you know, send an email through cries in, wild, cries in the wild at gmail.com. Uh, we're doing this, of course, to um, 
just provide some counsel from a, yeah, our personal perspective tied into the scriptures. That's it. Give some marriages hope because there's two. The divorce rate, even amongst it's Christians, high. is crazy. Mm-hmm. It, it, it is really out of whack how many saved couples are finding themselves in divorce. They want to. Uh, shove things under the rug and you gotta deal with them and make everybody think it's sweet it's not sweet no it's not at all it's marriage is not bubble gum lollipops always sunny it's no it's work. not it's a lot of work you have to cultivate your marriage exactly get out there and sweat that's it and what we need to do is um we need to just get a little bit more time spent with one another we gotta get back to spending intimate time um, time is not just being in the same room mm-hmm. because how many of us know how it feels to be maybe like this far from one another, but feel like she's in a whole nother galaxy and you're in a whole nother galaxy. So men and women, let's not only be presently active, but let's be present in our purpose. Right. What good is it for my body to be here, but my mind is somewhere, mind else. Is somewhere so else. That's, that's pretty much it for tonight. Yeah. We um, have like two, a minute. We have like two minutes left if anybody has anybody any questions. Anybody have any questions? Comments? Anything you'd Give like to add? Give us something to talk about next. You guys can talk to us. We like to interact. You want to sing a song, Charles? Um, sing no, them all. Right. I'm not much of sing a singer. Sing them I'm not much of a singer. It don't matter. You can, you can, create, a, um, shy. You can create an introduction song for us if yeah, you like. Y'all help us out with an introduction song. If anybody what? got any ideas. What did I say earlier? For, um, no, don't no, forget what I that. Say? I don't even remember because I don't want to remember. If you got a jingle that you want to share for our uh, new little episode that we're doing, Her Head, His Body, uh, we would love to hear it. Okay, um, that's what I was saying. Submit it. His head. No, it's not body. his head. It's... I mean, her body, his head. Her body, his head. Body. We like to have fun, y'all. Yes, definitely me. I. He was the, what is it called? Introvert. Introvert, yeah. And but... I was the... For those who hey. know me, they know that I can be extroverted when I need to be. Okay. I'm a jokester, but you got to get to know me first. See, that goes right That's back that into go- intimacy. Oh, God. Oh, God. I have somebody says, what's the role of the head and the body? Well, the role of the head is to protect, provide, mm-hmm. give guidance, and lead, right? And the body is to be a help that is meat or beneficial for so the me- head. In biblical sense, if you're coming from Ephesians 5, Paul says that husbands love your wives as Christ loved the, as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And in wives, submit unto your husbands as unto the Lord in everything. That's Ephesians 5. Paul spoke about that pertaining to the marital role. So I got to love my wife like Christ loved the church. Oh, yeah. That means even when she gets on my nerves, even when she rebels, I got to love her. My love cannot be conditional or hinged upon her submission. Because Christ's love to the church is not, not hinged gonna, upon He's submission. not going to get up there in front of God and say, well, Lord, I she didn't. ain't listening. Exactly. Or Lord. And... My wife's obligation, it's marital role, is to submit to me in submit. all things as if she was submitting unto God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. That's another topic, We're going to deal with that one Instagram, day. Instagram, that's that. another topic. Y'all but just wait. Natasha, yes, I see that you had something with, with unbelieving dealing with spouse. an unbelieving spouse. I got scripture for that in the New Testament. And what we'll do is prayerfully in an uh, upcoming episode, we're going to deal with dealing with an unbelieving spouse. There's scripture to uh, tell you on how to navigate that kind of situation. And that is a reality for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, we'll definitely deal with that, sister. We'll be more than happy. That is a yes, wonderful topic. Thank you. I appreciate you, you bringing Auntie. that up. Auntie. <laughs> praise God. But um, we're coming down to our last minute on Instagram. Anybody and I know else? it's going to shut off on them. Okay. It's going to shut off on them. Oh, so I want to make sure that we pray out before Instagram get cut out. All right? I'm, I'm praying. I'm going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we thank you thank for the you, word Jesus. that came thank forth you, today, Jesus. God. Lord, as we Hallelujah. navigate this perilous Hallelujah. world, we need your word to be the lamp unto Hallelujah. our feet and the light unto the path, Lord Hallelujah. God. Father God, we know that Hallelujah. Satan hates marriages because Hallelujah. it personifies Hallelujah. a unity between Hallelujah. you and mankind, Lord God. God. We know that marriages are the very image Thank of who you Jesus. are. So, Father God, protect and fortify Hallelujah. the breach areas right and every message, now, Lord God, God. as gap. restoration Hallelujah. is laid forth, Lord God, God. to build forth the walls He's of marriage again, Lord God. Lord God.
God, give them the Jesus. ability to have a mind to work, Lord God, you, to God. close up the areas that the enemy Thank will try to God. infiltrate, Hallelujah, to come together Jesus. and pray, Lord God, to operate, Lord, in unison and not confusion, you, that when the enemy tries to Jesus. divide and conquer, Lord God, be that glue that joins us together, yes, Lord God. God. Let us go into spiritual warfare Hallelujah. as one body and one mind, Hallelujah, Lord God. Let us God. have like-minded passion, Hallelujah, Lord God. Let us God. be with one accord in all that we do. You, Father Jesus. God, I ask that you like bless the marriages, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God, I ask that you call Hallelujah, life out of dead Jesus. marriages, Lord God. Hallelujah, marriages that God. seem that they have been dead, Jesus. Lord. I ask that you call life forth from it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we just ask that you yes, move, God. oh God, in the households of the Thank listeners and the viewers and the hearts and minds you, of those who tuned in tonight, Lord. Thank you, in God. Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah, Amen. Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, God. I just want Glory to pray for God. any marriages that is going through abuse right now. Thank hallelujah, God. oh God. Thank I you, pray Jesus. for the wife, oh God, or if it's the husband, hallelujah, oh God. Jesus, go by there wherever they are right now in the name of Jesus. Step in right now, hallelujah. You, if there's any children being involved in that situation, oh God, God, I ask you to make it stop right now in the, in name, the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank worship you, you. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God. Thank you, God, God, you are worthy. Hallelujah. You, you are worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Jesus. oh God. Name, Jesus. Bless we want to pray Lord. for the single people. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh God, that they shall wait. Hallelujah, right now, Lord, oh God. The man Jesus. will find you, Let women. The man will find God. you, women. But Hallelujah. God, Hallelujah, God. Thank, Thank you, Lord, God. God. You're awesome, oh Bless God. Name, Hallelujah. Jesus. And let us all, oh God, you, Lord, have God. a better intimate relationship Thank with you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Let Thank us all, God. married or not, let us all. Have oh, that zeal, God. oh God, to chase you, after Lord you, God. hallelujah, oh God. God. While there is still breath in found, our mouth, Lord God. hallelujah, In the God. name of Jesus, you are Lord worthy. God, we come against any Thank principality you, Thank you, God. that is trying to segregate these marriages, yes, Lord God. God. Any spirit of confusion yes. in the household Thank of you, the God. listener, Thank Lord. You, God. I call you out in the name in of the Jesus, name of and I plead the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. Right now in the name of Jesus, any dividing and segregating spirit, we stand against you right now by the power of, of the blood of the Lamb. In the Hallelujah. mighty name of Jesus, the authority right now. of Hallelujah. the Holy Ghost, we stand against Jesus. you and we call you out in Jesus' name. Thank Lord God, God, let peace, Hallelujah. tranquility, and solace Hallelujah. dwell in the households, Jesus. Lord God. A joy that is peace, unspeakable, unspeakable, Lord God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, Jesus Lord God. We ask that you, O oh God, redeem these relationships right now. and seek re reconciliation against Jesus. those, Lord God, who have been estranged. In the mighty name Hallelujah, of Jesus, Lord, God. we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is Amen. good. Amen. God is good. God. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. God is certainly good. Hallelujah. And we give him glory and we give him honor and praise. So we want to thank everybody that tuned in tonight, whether that was through YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. Again, this is something new we're doing. Her head, his body. We're going to be giving marital counsel from a word view and not a world view. If you have any type of concepts or any type of ideas, please send them to us and we will gladly address them in, a, uh, in an appeasable time. Um, this is again my wife, Sister Felicia Russell, and I am Pastor Charles Russell. Uh, we really had a good time tonight and um, yes. pray to God that everybody that watched was blessed. All glory goes to the Most High God. We thank Him for everything that He's done for us and we ask that. God continues to bless you all abundantly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. So God bless you, and until God next bless. time, praise the Lord. See you all later. We're gonna what? Oh, What's that? Go ahead. Topic. I didn't stop. What are we doing? Are we the next topic? Mm -hmm. We're going to pray about it. Okay. But I think that's a good topic that it Natasha is. brought up. So yeah. most likely we're going to be dealing with that topic because that is a very difficult one and a very yes, practical one mm -hmm. that we need a biblical way to approach. Yes. we got to always go to the Bible for Feel everything Bible. we go to, godly counsel. So wonderful if you have any topics please send them my way and share this please share this share. with somebody Hit everybody share right button. now i love seven views That's share it. please <laughs> if you have yet we to have subscribe on uh youtube you can go to my youtube channel hit the uh, subscribe button but also hit the little bell button so you get notifications when we go live yes. if you prefer the platform or youtube but ultimately god bless you all you have a wonderful night and until next time be encouraged is it off